Welcome guys, this is Hexarchy, and here are my pro tips. Early game wonders are incredibly powerful, especially ones like the pyramids, the hanging gardens, and the statue of Zeus. As you can see here, I've built the pyramids on turn two, and what this does is collect all special land resources within two hexes, even ones that are outside of your uh, border. So this one item is collecting one, two, three, four, five, six different special resources every single turn. To do this in the equivalent way without using wonders, we would need three mines and three pastures, which would take probably 10 or 15 turns. So just getting one wonder saves you 15 turns worth of building. The hanging gardens reduces the cost of the upgrading of your city, so you, are, you only have to pay one less food. This is particularly good if you're expanding with lots of different cities. Obviously it affects every single city, so the more cities you have, the better the effects. And the Statue of Zeus, all of your units start mobilised, so you can dominate the combat if you take the Statue of Zeus. So all three of them incredibly powerful, but different playstyles. So you choose which is the best for the scenario and the nation. But try to go for at least one of the three as early as you can. Let the AI take any decisions for you that you can take for yourself. So as you can see here, I've finished my turn. I've used all of my hammers and gold and it's telling me to end turn. But I've got an inventory that's over full. So I've got 10 items and only space for three. Now if I press end turn, the AI is gonna decide how to spend these items. And the AI doesn't necessarily make the best choices. So you should yourself decide how to spend all of these items and not leave it to the AI to decide. Following on from the last advice, at the end of every turn, while sorting out your inventory, before you press end turn, check the trade, the market. Sometimes you can pick up fantastic bargains. Every turn, these prices change. Sometimes they go up, sometimes they go down. So sometimes you might be able to buy an item for one gold and then sell it for four on the next turn. And quite often, if you don't have a resource yourself, then you might need to buy these resources for later on in the game. So if you have the spare capacity, or if you've just researched something that uses resources and industry, and it's cheaper to use the resources, then stock up in, on the marketplace whenever you get the opportunity to. Also, if one of your cities is very close to upgrading, you can sometimes buy cheap food in here and get a nice upgrade, and it will give you a citizen, which is going to give you more than it costs to actually buy the food in the first place. Also, you can buy luxury items. So if, for example, here, we are, we've got a yield penalty of 20%. If you don't have any luxury items in your inventory, you might be able to just buy one item and it might fill in four or five different icons. Early scouting can be really important to decide what you're going to do and you might also get the opportunity to get some random resources. So you can use a scout for this or you can use some other units like the horse archers and other cavalry. So I managed to get to here in a single turn and in one turn, I went from only being able to see this to be able to see almost the entire map. 
and now on the following turn I'm able to take this resource which is basically paid for the unit itself so just getting one early scout out can be game changing after a city upgrades it will dedicate one of your citizens to collect resources now on the turn that you upgrade the icon will flash green after that after one turn it'll go solid gold now if you try to move one of the solid gold ones it costs one industry to move it but you can move the green ones for free now quite a lot of the time the AI will choose not very good places to put your citizens and they never move them so once they've put it in a bad place and you upgrade something then you will have to manually move it yourself or upgrade the city again so quite often it will choose a sea tile which has got one water and two um, gold but I've got a tile here with three culture on it and two food so I would prefer to have this over here and collect culture for me so every time you level up a city make sure that your citizens are working on the tiles that you want them to be working on sometimes it can be good to put some early pressure on the opponent's cities to spoil their planning basically so we see here we've got two fairly decent early tier units now I used special resources to build these two units so this one only cost one stone and this one cost one horse and two industry I think so for two hammers one stone and one horse I managed to get two awkward to defend against units as you can see here the opponent I'm playing on the hardest difficulty is turn five and the opponent hasn't got a single combat unit out all they've got is one scout so now they're gonna have to change their plans to defend against these two oncoming military units never overlook the power of saving cards for the following turn so here I've got mathematics but I can't spend it on this turn now if I just put it into my discard pile although I am going to be redrawing pretty soon there's a chance I might not see this mathematics for another three four five turns so I can put it into my inventory and then next turn I'm guaranteed to be able to draw it teching up early on is really powerful in this game so if you have space in your inventory then just save something that you think might be beneficial for the next turn or two don't use your units at the start of the turn until you've decided on how you're going to spend your industry and your gold sometimes you can use your units and then realize that you've got cards which could have had a, a could have given a better outcome so say for example here I could try shooting this cavalry and hitting him with the axeman but then I would lose six health alternatively I could scroll through my deck and it just so happens because I've got the Parthenon I can see the top three cards of my deck I've got Berserker here so I can put the Berserker onto the horse archer and manage to kill this opponent without needing to lose any health with my axeman. My axeman's now free to move in 
and take the city. Also, rather than just always taking the city when you can, sometimes it's better to just kill as many of the enemy units as you can. With things like catapults, you don't even need to kill them. All you need to do is move on top of them to be able to take them. So here, I can't quite manage to reach him. But I've got a card that lets me move an extra 100%. It does, it's not actually... There we go. So now I'm actually able to move and capture this catapult. So if I had have used my units before looking at my cards, I wouldn't have been able to get the same outcome than I have had by looking at all of the cards first. So just take your time and don't make decisions before looking at all the options that you've got at your disposal. Try to have a game plan in mind rather than just spending your resources on the cards that you have in your hand. So France, for example, have a special unit in the medieval period and they're also got a bonus damage to their artillery. So you're going to want to rush engineering and gunpowder as fast as possible with France. So if you see these lines, they will tell you what you need to get the next tech. If it's got three lines going into it, you need all three. So work backwards from the place that you want to get to. So we need woodworking, construction, mining, masonry, metalwork, and writing and mathematics. So when you play with France, they're the three that you want to concentrate on. Each nation's going to have different strengths and weaknesses and different things that you're going to want to try and rush. So you'll figure out what is best for each nation, but make sure you don't just take whatever's in your hand. As in nearly all strategy games, you have to make a decision whether to play tall or to play wide. If you haven't heard of this phrase before, it means either building all of your resources into one concentrated area, one city, or spreading out and having as many cities as you can. Each nation is going to have strengths and weaknesses. Russia, for example, are good having lots of different cities. And I think maybe France is good if you just have a single one. So with that in mind, you're going to want to have a strategy in plan to focus on whether you're playing tall or wide. Now there are certain techs which will benefit each playstyle. So if we have a look down here, on hereditary rule, you've got a tech called plus eight, uh, Royal Guard plus 8 strength within 3 hexes of capital. So if you're playing tall, you're probably going to be within your capital's range for the majority of the game. And you're more than likely just going to want to defend your territory and not really go on the attack. So going for techs like this is going to be something that you want to think about getting as early as possible. So if you have just a simple Axeman with 8 strength and then you add this to him, he's now got 16 strength. So you've doubled his strength just from taking this one card. Now the opposite to this would be the Expeditionary Force, which gives you 8 strength when you're outside of your territory. So you can get up to some crazy shenanigans by just taking your basic units and giving them one or two of these, because you can stack these as many times as you want, as long as you have the upgrade slots available. So you can just get a level 1 unit with 2 or 3 of these upgrades and suddenly he's got 20, 30 strength. If you combine that with things like the Berserker, then you can get a 30 strength unit which hits twice. So these are fairly early techs 
you don't have to get all the way to the end like you would do with advanced tech. The logistics is a bit harder to get than the hereditary rule because it only costs one hammer to get the hereditary rule where with this it costs three science or six hammers. So it's a lot easier to defend than it is to attack. So playing tall, go for hereditary rule. Playing wide, think about going for logistics and expeditionary force. This is probably an obvious tip, but I'll mention it anyway. As in most card games, you're going to want to keep your deck as small as possible. So later on in the game, when you start getting decent cards, you don't have to sift through 50 cards to get the one decent one that you're after. So don't hold on to cards if you don't really think that you're going to use them in the near future. What I recommend is focus most of your major city upgrades into one city and don't try and upgrade three or four different cities with every single upgrade. This way you can scrap these cards after you've used them once and they won't clog up your deck. That way you'll be able to fight more efficiently with units and promotions for your units. Never place a barracks within two tiles of a city. If you place a barracks right next to your city and the enemy manage to steal it off you, they've now got a staging ground to attack your city without needing to use any cards like the charge ability. So all, if you're going to use barracks make sure to build them three tiles away. You don't want them two tiles away because then they'll be able to shoot you with ranged attacks as well. So the safest place to put them is three tiles away. If you want to do the opposite and take advantage of somebody else who's done this then the Conquistador item is the best item. So it's under advanced tactics and as soon as you move onto a hex you will capture it. So if somebody's got a barracks next to a city you just move onto it. You'll immediately capture the barracks without having to wait a turn. You can then deploy units in that barracks and then attack the city with the freshly deployed units. Some early game upgrades for your units can be really really powerful at the end of the game. So although they might clog up your deck for a few turns, sometimes it can be useful to keep hold of these upgrades. So one would be the Berserker which gives a unit two, two attacks instead of one. Now, this is hard to keep hold of because if you take another religion civic, it will get rid of this out of your hand. So if you want to go down the military route, don't go any further than paganism until you've put Berserker on the key units that you want it on. So there are some other really good promotions under the religious civic. So the Holy Warrior, for example, and the Combat Medicine. But sometimes having the attacking promotions are better than having ones that keep you alive longer. So don't necessarily go straight for these late tier religions when you can use an early tier one just as effectively. Another one, which I overlook quite often because I don't usually go down the fishing route, is the Woodsman. Now the good thing with this, because you don't go down the fishing route early on very often, it doesn't clog your deck up until you're ready to use it. And the Woodsman will remove all of your terrain movement penalties. Now this can be really useful if the opponent is behind 
mountains and forests and things like that. So the Woodsman is a very powerful item that works really well in the end. It's also, with it being the economic civic, there's only two economic civics. And the Agrarian Society, Agrarian, sorry, is an early game civic. And this one is more of a late game civic, even though it's an early attack. It's actually better in the late game than the early game. So feel free to take Agrarian first and then backtrack and take Hunter Gatherer when you want to start fighting. Following on from the last tip, quite often your upgrades are better put on the same unit. Many upgrades on one unit rather than spreading them across multiple units. Now this can be very hard to do with close combat units that have to fight within one tile because they always get retaliated against every time they fight so they die quickly. So what you're going to want to do is choose a unit that is ranged and the best units are the siege units because they can hit stacks rather than just a single unit. So if you can get even if it's just a catapult, it doesn't have to be a cannon. If you can get a catapult, which is only a tier 2 unit, and then get some early kills with it, you can then stick some really decent tech on it. Oh, oops. You can stick some really decent tech on it, like... If you put this Berserker on it, you can put it on two or three times. Then you can also give it some other technology. The General is a pretty decent one to have on it. So it can buff all of your melee units. And obviously you can use abilities like the Volley as well. Which is a really decent ability because it ignores defense bonuses. So going heavy on one or two ranged units on the upgrades is a lot better than just going for a variety of different units with one or two upgrades. So another one that is a decent upgrade to take but doesn't follow that rule is this military engineer. So you can have one unit dedicated with this military engineer and it will basically lay road everywhere you go. Now, if you put this on a cavalry unit, then you'll be able to lay a lot more road than if you put it on, say, a catapult. So stick this on your fastest unit, and then just use that unit to run between all of your cities and then to the front lines. That's a lot faster and cheaper than actually using the road card so I've started scrapping the road card and just using the road laying ability instead I recommend that you try it as well the economic civic industrialism has got incredibly decent cards in it and it only costs one to unlock so all three of them are very very good but for different reasons so mass produce for example you can get some really powerful combos on the go with mass produce so for example if you combo this with craftsmanship you can use craftsmanship on every single one of your cities and you can get somewhere in the region of 50 to 100 culture points in a single turn this will expand your borders massively. I think I've had one turn where I got 30 hexes or something by doing this mass produce craftsmanship combo on four or five different cities. The East India Company takes all of the hexes that are already unclaimed, uh, sorry, that aren't already claimed, that are unclaimed. <laughs> So basically, the best way to use this wonder is in the sea. Because nobody can 
claim tiles that are in the sea with units or cities that are not close to the coast. So if you get a city that's close to the coast and then stick the East India Company here, you will get a huge amount of territory all around that one tile and it's completely defended because there's no sea units in this game so it can't be destroyed or captured well if your city's captured it will be and that will give you loads of victory points i think yeah it's one victory points per two hexes so i think does it give you 20 or 30 maximum of 20 so you can get 10 victory points plus the four it already gives you so you can get 14 victory points just by using this one wonder in the middle of the sea. The invest is obviously self-evident. You just get loads of hammers, loads of industry. So all three of these techs are incredibly powerful. So you might want to think about going for this pretty early on before you start getting into combat. The barracks building is incredibly good at pumping out a lot of the same unit because every time you deploy from a barracks, the unit that you deploy gets returned to the top of your draw pile. So as long as you have the resources to keep drawing cards, then if you have say four barracks, you can deploy four of the same unit from them four barracks. This is obviously mostly good if you've got a bloated deck with lots of cards and you don't want to have to sift through all of your deck to get one decent card so sometimes if you're going down the military route you might want to build four or five barracks right on the edge of your territory and then you can pump out cannons although obviously they cost iron as long as you've got the iron, you can pump out four or five cannons in a single turn. Obviously, you can buy iron from the marketplace as well. So because they only cost four hammers, it's a lot easier to get four cannons out than it is to get four musketmen out, which obviously cost eight hammers. So it's very rare that you're going to have that amount of hammers. So stick a load of barracks on the edge of your territory and straight away you've just got a massive army in a single turn and they were my pro tips hope it was helpful if you'd like to like and subscribe and you'll be able to see some future gameplay cheers for watching take care i shall see you soon